Okay, now that we've got some basic functionality in place for the constructor, let's go ahead and move our focus over to set parent. Remember, with set parent, the idea is to take this transform node and make it a child of another node, or you could even go as far as to take this node and make it a root level node, depending on how you call set parent. And what do I mean by that? Well, simple. What does set parent take in? Set parent takes in the parent that you wish to become this particular transform node's parent. Now, what happens if you send null in? Well, wouldn't null indicate that you don't want there to be any transform node that's going to serve as the parent of this transform node? And if you have that scenario, what do you have? This transform node would be a root level node, right, Logan? Right. If, there, if we don't have a parent, that means we are residing at the root of the scene. Exactly. So what kind of code needs to go in here? Well, let's break it down. The best way to do this is to simply move back over to the whiteboard and take a look at what happens when you take an object and parent it to another. And we already gave an example of that all the way back over here when we took ball and we parented it over to our transform2 node. Now, for some lovely reason, Photoshop took my pen away, so let me grab it back. So let's see what happened when I took ball and I put it over here underneath transform2. Well, I had to remove it out of the list of root nodes, okay? Well, what if it wasn't in a root node situation? What if it was actually parented to another transform node? That means that it would have been in some other node's list of children. So basically, the node can reside in one or two states in regards to who its parent is. If its parent is null, it is at the root. If its parent is set to some other transform node, then that means a reference to himself is being stored in that parent's transform node's children's list. Whew, boy. Trust me, it just is. <laughs> and you can see that. Here's an example of it if I pull out my pointer real quick. Down here with box. Remember, box is being stored in its parents' list of children. Okay? So here with box being set up right here, its parent is transform1. So transform1 contains a list of children, and in that list is a reference to box. And we see it right here. So we can really take a look at set parent as a two-step process. The first step would be to remove it out of some sort of containing list. It could rather be, it's rather one of two things. It's rather out of the root nodes list, if it is a root transform node at the moment, or remove it out of a transform node's children's list if it is parented to some other transform node. So that is the functionality we need to get set up. So Logan, let's go ahead and pull up Visual Studio and set that up. Okay. So jumping into set parent, the first thing that we need to look for in set parent is how, what is the parenting situation right now? Are we the child of some other transform node, or are we a root node? Exactly. So we need to do a check, because the first thing we need to do, since this is kind of like a move operation, it's looking at set parent and saying, well, all right, we're moving from wherever we are in the hierarchy to somewhere else in the hierarchy. So let's determine if let's we're... Throw in, let's throw in some comments real quick. Let's go ahead and say remove from old parents children slash root node. Or just say from old um, containing list. Okay, that that works. So that would be parent or uh, root node. Yep. All right. Now the check is going to be if this dot parent is equal to null. That means we are a root level transform node. And in that case, we need to remove ourselves from the root nodes list. So we can say root nodes dot remove and feed it ourselves. So we feed it this. Otherwise, so if we did indeed have a parent, so if the parent was not null, that means we need to look at that parent, tell that parent to remove us from its children's list. That's right. So that would be um, this dot parent dot children. So our dot parent, now his children list. Remove. And what do we want to remove from that children list? Ourselves. So this dot parent dot children dot remove this. Okay, perfect. So that is a look at the first step in set parent. Now we need to do the second step, and the second step is to assign our new parent. And once again, one of two things just happened. Rather, we sent in to parent ourselves 
to a particular transform node or to null. And this is going to basically dictate, do we need to add ourselves to a parent's children list, or do we need to add ourselves to the root node list if we're about to become a root null node because null was passed in? All right, so let's go ahead and code that in. Go ahead and put comments saying uh, assign new parent. Okay. So this will be the code for a assign new parent. And catch a sign spelling real quick. Uh, and then N and G and all Beautiful. that fun. Exactly. All right. Okay. So first thing we need to do is, well, we know that we have a new parent coming in, which is either null or an actual node. And that the assignment of the parent field within this transform node is critical because in the set parent method, it's the very first thing we do. We check it. So we better turn around and set it right, right. here. It also means that the order of actions that we carry out in set parent is important because we need to use our old parent, but later that old parent gets changed to the new parent. That's right. So this is the part where we reassign the parent. So we say this dot parent is equal to the new parent, so which is the parent parameter. Mm -hmm. So there we have now res or set our new uh, parent field. Okay, and now what we need to do is check to see if that parent we sent in was null, because if it was null, that is, that means we're going to be a root node. So we'd need to add ourselves to the root nodes list. Okay, so let's do a check and see if the parent parameter is null. And if it is indeed null, that means well, what containing list do we need to go into? We know we've been taken out of some containing list. We need to go into a new containing list based on what the parent is supposed to be. If the parent is null, that means we go to the root, which is root nodes dot add this. Otherwise, we had a valid parent, so we need to take that parent and add ourselves to its children. So parent dot children dot add this. And believe it or not, that's all of the functionality required for set parent. You can see set parent does a really good job of helping to keep everything organized. Remember, several videos back, I said what would happen if we ended up keeping a reference to ourselves up here in the root nodes list and adding ourselves into somebody else's children list. We would have all sorts of problems. And like I said, it was all about making sure that your methods handled this type of a scenario properly so that if you needed to be added to a children's list of a transform node, you simply got removed from some other list, be it another transform node's children list or the root node's list if you happen to be a root node right before getting parented. Okay, and that is what has taken place. Everything is highly organized. Back over here inside of Visual Studio, inside the set parent functionality, let's go ahead and build. All is good, so we're being removed, then we are simply being added to the new one. And that is everything that we wanted to show you for set parent, and that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks a lot.